and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much to the returning subscribers. As usual, I truly appreciate your viewership. And to all the new subscribers or new viewers, please subscribe down below if you haven't already done so. And stay tuned to more Valoian greatness. So as you can tell from the title of the video, I'm going to be talking about skin darling. I want to talk about some things that I wish I knew when I hit puberty, when my adolescent phase started. Because, wow guys been through a lot in terms of acne and skin problems and just insecurities via my skin problems so let's get straight into the video right so there is a multitude of tips that you can use particularly skin tips that pertain to your own skin type I've just decided to round it up into eight tips that I wish I knew number one being that you need to stop picking at your pimples if you look at my skin over here main reason why I did not wear makeup today over here over here on my forehead a bit and some on my chin as well I've got a lot of hyperpigmentation around areas where I used to have spots and I decided it was a bright idea to pop it or if um, a pimple dried out and it formed a scab I would pick at it I used to have hectic acne on my forehead and where you see most of my hyperpigmentation it is really not good to pick at your skin because you open up a fresh wound number one Secondly, you expose that wound to the germs that are inside your nails, the germs that are on your hands, as well as just germs that are in the air um, and germs that are in whatever will touch your skin, basically. So you need to please leave your pimples alone. You can use acne treatments. Um, I know some Young Solution has a, a great acne um, treatment that dries out your pimples. I used to use it and unfortunately I outgrew it, but it used to work for me. Or simple, go back to basics and use calamine lotion. Calamine lotion is something that I still use to this day, guys. It's less than 20 rands. It clicks. You can find it at any convenience store or any pharmacy. That'll help dry out your pimples. And in drying out your pimples, your pimples will literally just either fall off or when you're like washing or scrubbing, it'll come off naturally and safely and healthily. Number two. Do not touch your face. We need to stop this habit of touching our faces, myself included. Still working on it. You need to stop touching your face because you touch a whole lot of things. We touch ourselves, we touch each other, we touch our pets, we touch fountains, we touch doorknobs, we touch door handles. You get my drift. So all of those things that you're touching transfer germs and bacteria and a lot of other nasty stuff onto your hands. Now imagine you've just popped your pimple and then you touch your face. Number three, contrary to popular belief, oils are your friend. Obviously you need to pick whichever essential oils um, are good for your particular skin type. For example, oils that are really friendly with my skin are oils such as coconut oil, um, olive oil, um, tea tree oil, and there's another oil that I'm forgetting. However, you need to, I'm afraid it's trial and error, so you need to play around and see what works for you. Oils help remove dirt, they actually help remove makeup um, and just excess dirt within on your skin. And then also, they also help promote your skin's natural moisture. I did not know that until I visited this other um, stand at Clicks, at sorry, Edgar's, and they told me that no, actually, you're prone to oily skin, but oil can actually help you combat the oiliness. And I'm just like, number four, and this might be a mouthful beware of harsh products now overwashing or overusing harsh products can lead to your natural moisture being stripped off and if you're a person of color or if you're dark skinned darker skin you might find that it leaves a grayish residue or a grayish appearance on your skin that means that your skin or whatever you're using to wash your skin is stripping your skin of its natural moisture if you're prone to dry skin, you might want to reduce the frequency at which you wash your face. So instead of washing it two times a day, maybe you wash it once in the morning and then in the evening, you substitute the wash with a hot, damp um, cloth and you just like rub that on your skin. That also works um, in terms of opening up your pores um, so that whatever moisturizer or whatever serum you're using can seep into your pores and work its magic. If you're someone who's prone to acne and oily skin, like me you might want to stay away from products that are too gentle 
Now, I spent most of my adolescent life talking about like, oh, I want to stay on a natural journey. I want to stay on non-chemical products. Sis, chemicals are actually your friend. I'm talking about chemicals such as your hyaluronic acid, your salicylic acid, and your glycolic acid. Hyaluronic acid will go deep into your pores and it actually unclogs your skin. Um, and I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> your glycolic acid... Um, that is more for reducing your pore sizes so you'll find that especially around your nose and your chin um sometimes even on my cheeks my pores look enlarged ever since i've started using products with glycolic acid that has been reduced and then lastly the hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid is more about plumping your skin so it like basically makes you <laughs> so um i've got some products here that i've started using Neutrogena, surprise, surprise, and I say surprise, surprise because back in high school I tried to use Neutrogena, it did not do anything for me. And now that I'm older, now that I'm older and my skin has obviously changed and you know, yeah, it's gone through a lot of changes, now Neutrogena is working magic for me. So what I do is I double wash, I know it's not not advisable but guys I'm really prone to like even those little white um, bits of oil that seep out of your nose and your chin I had it bad so I, I I scrub with this first of all which is the daily scrub with the spot control spot stress control daily scrub and then I go in <laughs> my bad and then I go in with this deep cleaning cleanser so what this does, it gently removes those white thingies and it also, um, I could say it softens up my skin really, right? And then this is basically like a vacuum cleaner. This just goes in to like, just, yeah, unclog and debrief basically. And then when I'm done with that, I tone with this toner. As you can see, I've been using it um, quite re religiously. Um, I use this with normal cotton pads or you can use cotton wool or whatever whatever floats your boat but I use this and then at night I go in with this hydro boost which has hyaluronic acid um, little it has these little thingies it has these little beads the hyaluronic beads and then I go in with the moisturizer so it's like this and then in the um, afternoons, in the morning, sorry, I don't use this. I only use this at night. However, once I'm done moisturizing, I go in with sunscreen. Sunscreen is very important, but it's a point that I'll mention later on. Right. And then last but definitely not least, whether you're prone to dry skin or oily and um, acne prone skin, stay away from glycerin or um, glycerol. So that is a humectant, which means that it draws in moisture. However, with glycerol or glycerin, it draws in moisture just as much as it draws out moisture. So you'll be putting it in your hair or your skin or whatever, and you'll be like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah, it's working. But over time, you start to notice that there's a, um, a relative dryness to your skin, and that's because it's soaking out. It's literally dehydrating your skin. So be careful of that. Number five, exfoliate and tone. Exfoliate and tone. Now, I mentioned that I use this as my toner. However, you can use other toners. This is a chemical toner, um, which contains salicylic acid and alcohol. Yeah, that's basically the only acids or the only chemical components that are majorly in here. However, you can also use other chemical um, toners which have um, your essential acids like your hyaluronic acid, salicylic acid, glycolic acid and such. However, you can also find um, gentler toners such as rose water. I've also used rose water in the past. It just so happened that I also outgrew it. So yeah, that's also good with really good with treating acne scars. It's really, really good. And then in terms of exfoliators, you can use chemical exfoliators or you can use um, gentle scrubs, which you can use as daily scrubs, such as this one that I use over here. I use this on a daily basis and it hasn't really done anything for me. If you can see, I've got two major, I'm touching my face. <laughs> I've got two major 
pimples here and here and those came because it was that time of the month well it is currently that time of the month but you know before that time of the month your hormones are going crazy and yeah so I've been using this over the pimples it has not popped the pimples it has not like caused them to start oozing pus or anything um, another thing that I use to exfoliate is this little brush over here you can get this at any click store um, it comes in a set with different brushes and different um, settings as well it does not come with batteries though so just be aware of that I bought mine for about 150 rands or 100 and less than 150 rands 150 rands or less um, but yeah, it comes in a little set and you can use this. I would not advise that you use it daily. It is quite soft, the bristles are not hard. However, you don't want to over exfoliate because over exfoliation leads to hyperpigmentation. This baby over here. Number six, sunscreen. Now there is a common myth that people of color do not need to use sunscreen. Like I said, it is a myth. You do, you do need sunscreen, not just on your face, but your entire body, um, but I use it on my face. So I won this sunscreen in an Instagram giveaway a couple of weeks ago. Um, it is the SPR sunscreen and SPF 50. Now I was not clued up on SPF and all of that, so I just got the highest one. I've always gotten the highest one because I don't know what the difference is. But sunscreen is really good to protect your skin as like, global warming is real so as the temperatures rise so do the effects on your skin and it may not show now however as you grow older and your skin depreciates you will notice a few spots here and there that were not there that are due to the Sun number seven it is important to take care or take heed of what you eat dairy products number one Dairy products are actually really bad for your skin and I feel very blasphemous saying this because I am like number one supporter of like all things dairy. I love my cheese. <sighs> it's really hard for me to say this, but dairy products are actually not good for you. Dairy products, for example, can trigger acne and skin irritations. However, your fermented products such as your cheeses, <laughs> number one fan your cheese and your yogurts those are not so bad in your amasi uh, sour milk that's not so bad fermented products don't have as much trigger products however dairy products in general are not good for your skin foods with refined sugars and fast foods are the perfect recipe for um, problematic skin so you need to also be aware of that your fruits and vegetables fruits such as pomegranate kiwi oranges and lemons papaya or popo but it's really good for your skin and it's really high in vitamins and minerals um, such as your vitamin E and your zinc vegetables such as your sweet potatoes um, broccoli those type of things those are really good for your skin as well and they feed your skin what you need your green veggies as well are really 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 good for your skin and then also foods such as um, fatty fish are really rich in omega-3 fatty acids which actually feed um, your skin it causes the, the plumpness and it adds to the elasticity of your skin so your skin looks like this and not like last but definitely not least number eight is the importance of cleaning makeup brushes and beauty blenders now I was always under the impression that you know I can always use, I can always use it one more time one more time one more time but it's actually very important because when you store your beauty blenders things such as dust um, accumulates on those um, brushes and beauty blenders and stuff like that and the more you use it the more you collect up dead skins like small dead skin particles you collect makeup dirt and things like that so you'd want to wash that out instead of pouring that onto your pores and sometimes it happens that you apply makeup just after you've washed your face so your pores are not closed yet well your pores are never really closed but now imagine feeding all of that dirt into your pores that is nasty so you'd want to clean that stuff yeah. Right, and that is the end of this video. I hope you found it very informative. If you want more videos like this, please let me know down below in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe down below and become a Vuloian. Please stay tuned to more videos to come. I'll be posting every Sunday midday, and I hope that you guys have a super califragilistic espialidocious week. Mwah!